In this video, we're going to look at another way that we can use the chain rule to differentiate a given function. In the last video, we looked at Leibniz form and looked at how we can take the derivative of one function with respect to one variable and then take the derivative of a function defined by that same first variable with respect to a new variable. And once we have those derivatives in their own right, we multiply them together to find the derivative of the original function y with respect to x. And it can get kind of confusing to think about because it's kind of confusing to say, honestly, I got a little lost on what I was saying there. But in a case where we have something like this, where we don't have specific functions defined in a specific way and we just kind of have this jumbled up puzzle of functions, what we like to use is the form known as Newton form. And so this video is going to focus on kind of walking through the steps and the process for how to find a derivative using the Newton form of a derivative when we use the chain rule. What the idea of the Newton form really is, is to differentiate from the outside in. Anytime you come across a function on the outside of other functions, you're going to differentiate it first, then move to the inside, and then move to the inside and keep moving in until you run out of things to differentiate. So what I mean by that is as we read this function, we have negative 3 tenths. So we know this is kind of like a constant multiple, right? So in a lot of our processes, we can kind of exclude this and bring it back in the end because it doesn't really play a big bearing on what the derivatives will turn out to be. It just gets kind of messy to kind of keep this following along throughout the whole process. So what we're going to do is we see that the first function that we come across is cosine. And then inside of that, we have a sine of something minus 7. So the sine of that something minus 7 is all one function because remember how we can if we take sine of x minus 7 it's like a transformation of the graph itself. So we've got to bring that minus 7 with us when we're talking about uh, the function sine of something minus 7. And then the innermost function that we have is e to the x. So in this case we're actually going to use the chain rule to differentiate three different functions as k of x is a composition of these three functions. So like I said, in order to differentiate from the outside in, it can get kind of confusing to keep track of what you need and what you need to take care of and where you need to incorporate what derivatives and what original functions. So as I was learning calculus, the way that I learned to keep all those functions and derivatives straight was I went over and made a table. It's kind of some scratch work that you do throughout this process, but it helps you to keep everything organized in a nice clean fashion. So if we want to call cosine f function f we call sine of something minus 7 function g and this function h we're going to incorporate those into our table we have f g and h and then right below them what we're going to do is take the derivatives of them okay so what i mean is when we have cosine of something we're going to literally write cosine of something we're going to leave this argument blank because we don't know what that something is going to be that's the whole point of this table and it kind of flows nicely and i'll show you what i mean when we get to that point so the next function that we have is sine of something minus 7. Okay, similarly to how we had cosine of something. And then the last function that we have is just e to the x. So now that we have our functions listed up here, the next step is to take the derivative of each of these individually and finish off our table. So the derivative of cosine is negative sine of whatever's inside of there, right? Okay, simple enough. The derivative of sine of something minus 7 well, when we take the derivative of something minus 7 like this, this minus 7 is a constant, so it evaluates to be a derivative of 0, so all you really need to worry about is what's the derivative of sine, and that's cosine. But then, what's the derivative of e to the x? It's kind of a trick question, but the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So now we finished off our table, and we kind of need to worry about what our answer is going to look like. What form is it going to take? Well, according to... Newton form, what we're going to have is we defined this function earlier as k of x. So what our answer is going to look like is, and bear with me as I write all this stuff down, is we are going to have f prime of g composed with h of x times g prime of h of x times h prime of x. Or similarly, we're going to kind of write this in the best way that we can. We have f prime composed with g composed with h of x times g prime composed with h of x times h prime of x. 
So now that we have what the form our answer will take established, we got to think, okay, how is the table going to actually help us in this answer? But when we look at this first chunk here, this first part of the multiplication, we have this composition times this composition times this function. This first factor in the multiplication is f prime of g of h. Well, this is f prime, this is g, and this is h. So it follows a nice pattern here. So you're going to have negative sine of sine of something minus 7, and that something is e to the x. So how this table kind of works is you're going to start in the bottom left, and if you have three functions in this case, you're going to go diagonal and then to the right. So it kind of helps you just you fit e to the x goes here, and then sine of e to the x minus 7 goes inside this argument. So this is how it will look. It'll look like negative sine of sine of e to the x minus 7. It can get kind of confusing to think about on the first pass, but as you do more and more problems, if this method doesn't make sense, do it the way that makes the most sense to you. This is just a great tabular representation of our derivatives that I've used in the past to help me know where to plug different things in. So this is our first piece of our product here that we define as the chain rule in Newton form. The second piece that we have is g prime of h of x. So here is g prime, right here cosine, and then h is e to the x again. So what this is going to look like is we're going to multiply cosine of e to the x. And that's what we get for our g prime of h, because we compose g prime with h, so we get cosine of e to the x. And then lastly, our last little bit that we got to add in here is another multiple of h prime this time, not just h. So we have to multiply by h prime, which is e to the x. It looks like a jumbled mess. I'm going to go ahead and add in some parentheses to kind of barricade off our different factors from each other so it looks a little cleaner and nicer. But this is actually our derivative when using the chain rule on three functions.